Hey everyone, how's how's it going? Hope everyone is all right, staying safe and at home. Let me just do the usual check if the audio is working. Seems so. So let's get started. Let me just put the windows here on the secondary monitor correctly. All good. So last time the last stream a couple of weeks ago we started implementing the the outbox pattern and all that that it requires so creating some tables or a table to store the event and um, created the, that logic to detect events from the database changes when we change a user so in the meantime i did some changes not a lot but changed a bit so if we go to the where i put it the db context while we were working on it uh, i put all the code in here just for us to get going uh, but now I moved it and create something I called the I event mapper. So the idea is instead of having all the code here to directly, of course, we I created this simple interface that gets the DB context, and uh, this is just to be helpful because we are using the date time where the event happen so instead of doing calculating that all the time i just pre-calculated it but it's a detail and the db context so the, the event mapper can go through the changes and it will return an outbox message so by doing this event mapper let me show you an implementation so we have three so the three kinds of events that we want to do right now which are when the user is registered, updated or deleted. So let's see the registered basically goes to the DB context, finds the, in the change tracker, finds the entries for a user where the state is added and then converts it to an outbox message. Whoops, forgot to mute the phone. So, but this is the code we already we saw in the past stream this part the only thing i did was uh, i grabbed it and put it in separate implementations so it's more generic instead of having to put all the code in there anytime we, we want a new a new kind of event and we want to use the same technique to calculate it we just create a new implementation of i event mapper and then we receive this i event mapper in the db context an I enumerable. So as we configure it, I can show you the configuration, but we configure this in the container, dependency injection container, and then it automatically injects the collection of mappers and we just need to call all of them. So in this case, before the safe changes, as we were doing, I now have uh, this map and add event calculate the current time just to avoid every mapper doing the same detail and uh, I grab for all the mappers we select all the events they, that they calculate normally it will be only one because the user was created so just one event or the user was updated just one event but to keep it generic uh, I did it this way so with this approach we separate things we just get something that grabs the events then we can add if we have events we can add it to the outbox messages db set and then return if there was some event mapped and now we need to do this second part so we have the where events detected then we are saving changes so 
when we say save changes, besides our changes, we are storing the events in the outbox. Now, we can have something in the background that from time to time checks to see if there are events in the outbox. But let's imagine we put it doing this from 30 to 30 seconds. So it's a 30 seconds delay between the events are persisted in the outbox and sent. It's not terrible, but we can do better. So what we are going to do is when there are events detected, we are just going to invoke a like a listener saying there's things for there are new events you can send them so that's what we will be implementing it today using some interesting uh, tools namely uh, system threading channels which is like a in-memory pub sub uh, set of classes so we're going to play with that And remember, if anything's not clear, interrupt me. I'll try to answer the best I can. But uh, until now, I was just making a summary of what we have and the slight adjustments I did. So, for starters, I'll put here, and because we want this to be decoupled, I'll just create a new interface here and calling it I outbox message listener at the class interface and what I'll do is just avoid on new a new I call it on new message and I'm not super happy with the name but it will work. Just check out box message and it has an ID. Or better yet, I'll do it params int I think it's an int mm, wrong place. It's a long, so we'll grab the long. So this will be invoked when there are new messages. So we'll just go to the DB context. That is here. And over here if were events detected I did params because it's fancy but I'll just simplify so Put an innumerable for now. And what we'll do is I'll need to change a bit this interface because I initially was thinking of this of doing this in one way, but now I'm thinking about doing this in another way. So instead of this I'll just do
this. And if events detected dot select okay so initially I was just thinking saying new things in the database go do it but now I'm thinking maybe instead I'll just provide the ID of the things that happened so it's more straightforward for then the publisher do this Okay, so when events are detected, we call this and pass in that information. Let's see. And now, over here in the infrastructure, I'll change this to events. Factor this, just namespaces. Okay. Call the members. Move this in there. And now I'll add an implementation of that interface, which will be hmm. Are you got and I outbox comment it. Okay. So on your message and we get this. And what we are going to use is let's put the constructor and we'll create something that is a private read only channel of long. Okay, so this channel, let me open up a browser. So this channels is, um, is a way to implement something like a pub sub in memory. So like a queue, but in memory instead of uh, distributed. And it's a uh, new, there were other things in the past, but this one is uh, async ready and uh, optimized for, for the new, new way some things are being implemented. So it uses value task to avoid allocations when possible, stuff like that. And we'll be using this. So anytime we get a new message, we'll, um, We'll send it to the, the channel and then we'll have readers on the channel or, or better yet one reader, we'll have just a single reader and multiple writers and the reader can then, uh, in this case, what we'll do is the reader will grab the ID, uh, read from the database the event with that ID or the outbox message and then publish 
that event to the to our messaging infrastructure in this case will be kafka but we're still not there we'll get there eventually but yeah so channels is a uh, somewhat new it has like i don't know when is this post from 2019 so it's maybe one two years old so not really that old and that's what we are going to use it so we'll initialize it here I don't want to initialize it in the constructor because it will be controlled only by this by this let me just rename this this is a bad name if you have any ideas better let me know but the idea is that this same class will implement two f features or maybe not no, I, I think so. Maybe we can put them apart, but okay. We have like a, your question. Let me try one thing, a new feature I added here to Twitch. Don't know if it's working. Okay, I, I think it's not working. Don't know why. But yeah. Okay, now it's working. So, question is, can you give a simple explanation of what is the difference between value task and task? So, the main difference, let me just uh, put something here value task of long and the task of long so the main main difference is that a task if we go check out the code is a class and a value task is a struct so this is the main difference when we have a, a class, it's always allocated memory in the heap. If it's a struct, uh, a struct is not allocated in the heap, so it's only on stack. So the cost of uh, allocating it and then cleaning up, so the garbage collector, is uh, lower because in case of a, a struct as it's in stack, as soon as the method completes, the stack is cleaned up, so it goes away the the class no so this is the biggest difference so why does value task uh, why is it better for performance it depends it might be worse but it depends so a value task works like a like a union of the the t and a task so what happens is if the the operation can be completed synchronously it will not need to allocate a new task in the heap and it can return the t result immediately if the um, if the it is not completed synchronously so imagine if it's cached it can be returned immediately if it's not cached uh, we need to in that case do the await and in that case, it will allocate. A task will always allocate. A value task will only allocate if it actually needs to be asynchronous. That's the main difference. So in cases where we think it's not going to be needed to be asynchronous, we can use value task to improve a bit the performance. Uh, let me just put this back here, just so people know what I'm talking about. Uh, so, um, imagine that we are implementing an uh, in-memory cache. Mm. 
imagine that we are implementing a in-memory cache. So in that case, we imagine the simplest thing. Uh, the in-memory cache is a dictionary. And the dictionary, we get things from there synchronously. If we are doing like a, a service that we know that most of the times will respond from cache, we can just uh, return a valid task. And most of the times it will be synchronous because we'll just go to cache and return. And if not, if we actually need to do a request or go to the database, then in that case, we ac will actually await. So that's where it can get better performance. If instead we need to, if it's always a synchronous, then normally a task is more performant because it locates a little less. So it's a trade-off, but there are more things and some more interfaces to implement, stuff like that. Uh, so, but this is the, the basics of it. Make sense or still any question? And that's the reason why the channels use this because there is the assumption is most of the time there will be already things in the channel to process. If not, then we can wait a, a bit, but most of the times we just want to keep processing. Let me know if it made sense, the explanation or nice. Okay. So we'll create a channel. And to create a channel, we use some helper methods. If I remember how to use them. Yeah, okay. And we have the option to create a bounded channel or an unbounded channel. We're going to unbounded right now, but probably shouldn't. So a bounded means that it can be, it can get full. And if it gets full, we need some strategies to or block the, the publishers or uh, drop messages, stuff like that. In an unbounded channel, it will always accept new, new messages. But why it's not great is it grows indefinitely. So if the consumer is not processing at a good enough speed, it will eventually blow up the memory. So should probably be bounded. But right now, let's not worry about that too much. And we'll create here. That's all. We have the channel. So. Now that we have a channel, what we'll do is when we get new messages, we can go to the channel, get the writer because right now we want to write, but I think there's something missing. I'm pretty sure there are options here. Let me check new. Yeah, I want to use this to make some configurations. So single reader true. We only will have one reader of the channel. Single writer false. So we'll have multiple writers to it. And No, we don't need to change this because the default is being asynchronous. This would be if we wanted to continue consuming on the same thread that published the message, but the default is being asynchronous, if I'm not mistaken. So okay, so writer just will do try write so for each message ID we'll try write message ID 
the reason for this try right is that why uh, I was talking about if for instance the queue is full the the channel is full and we the writing may fail because we don't uh, we can't fit anything anymore an alternative is write async and it would wait until it could write but we just want to try write in this case we are pretty sure it will write because it's an unbounded channel so it will write and the second reason why we don't we can do try write and not even care about the result is because we'll have a fallback pub outbox mess message publisher that will from time to time make sure that the database table the outbox table uh, is not with um, doesn't have events that are lost there for a long time because that might happen for some reason like the imagine that the the server goes down uh, before the messages are sent so in that case when we start over we need to make sure that we publish everything even the things uh, that were there already so as we need that fallback the, this kind this kind of thing is basically um, an optimization to try to send events as soon as possible but if we didn't implement this and just did that uh, thing that from time to time would um, publish it would work the same it would be just slower sending out the events so that's why i don't really care if it fails to put the message in the channel we'll eventually figure it out in the fallback process so this is good enough so the outbox message manager on new messages is listening and what we'll do what we'll do maybe I will change this a bit but let's continue like it is and then I'll change it so now we have the part that uh, listens pushes messages onto the channel now we can do the part that publishes them into the actual queue in this case we'll just log a message let me just put the logger so we, th we see things happening and we'll do a this will will not be very organized at first we'll organize it eventually so this will be async Sync task uh, with the lack of a better name right now, it will be go like this consume a sync. Okay, and now we'll consume messages from here. And now we'll use some C sharp eight and and .NET Core latest versions things to do. Wait for each ID in message ID channel dot reader dot read all async so this is the new iAsync enumerable stuff from C sharp 8 and uh, the channel reader already provides a method that returns an iAsync enumerable so we can just await for each 
and do this. Let me just put a comment here. We don't really care. We don't care too much if it succeeds. Because we'll have a fallback handle forgotten messages. Okay. And right now, what we are going to do is if when we get a message ID, we'll do our message equals I need something here yeah so what we need here is an I scope scope factory you'll see why in a bit But basically, we want to make a request to the, we want to grab the message from the database. So we need a, a DB context, but because we'll use this channel as an in-memory thing to keep it working, uh, we can't just inject a DB context because it would live for the lifetime of the application. And normally we don't want that. So we'll inject a scope factory to so we process things in a scope. So what we'll do here instead of this will be scope factory using var more C sharp eight stuff create scope. Okay, and then we want to dispatch the thing. So maybe we'll create another class. Let's just create it here. Call it uh, box publisher. We'll get interfaces and stuff like that. the outbox publisher and it will have a method like public task publish in sync which will get the message id and the cancellation token stuff so you not implemented exception And what we'll do is our will be scope dot service provider get required service. Let's just make this instead an interface. And we'll call await publisher dot publish async okay now I'll put a note here it's just saying that uh, when message at a time might hinder performance consider 
batching some messages. So I'm doing this right now for simplicity. Let's go like that to keep it simple, but it will probably have an impact if we have a lot of messages, like we have 100 messages and we are just consuming one by one. So making a query to the database to get one, publishing one to the queue, doing it all again. So it's probably a better idea if we could batch like uh, 10, 20, 50 messages, read them all from the database, put them in the queue, then start again. I think that that would be, it would have better performance than just doing one by one. So let's continue with this because it's simple, but then we need to, to do this. So let's move the Outbox Publisher to move to, okay. Let us just, let's go with the class for now. Then we can do the interface. Public. Okay. And now we can, in the constructor, get the auth db context. Keep it here. We go to the database and grab the message. So the outbox messages dot find the sync. Message wait what conversion from above to reference type object. Mm. What you want is this. Okay, so we have the message. We'll need to do some more stuff, but let's just do I logger of Outbox Publisher. And we have this here, so let's do logger publishing message JSON serializer serialize message just for us to see this working so we grab the message and we'll publish it we'll need to do this Now one thing we need to do is db dot database dot uh, we're 
do do. Okay, so we need to create a transaction because right now what we'll do is db dot block messages dot remove message and we'll db dot save changes and why am I doing this stuff? So imagine that we have that fallback thing or something like that that's going to grab the message and uh, for some reason maybe it takes a long time it shouldn't but let's imagine it can take a long time to get it done for some reason and um, another uh, thing starts another process starts and uh, tries to publish the message or even if it's not on the same server, imagine on a different server, container, whatever, another thing grabs the same message and tries to publish it. Then we'll have multiple messages published. That can always happen, so the, 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 the subscriber will need to be prepared to handle that, but if we can avoid it, better. So one way we can avoid it is if we begin a transaction and uh, ch change this, in this case, let's just uh, remove it, but not commit it because we haven't uh, published the message yet. If something else that tries to grab this message, it can't because it will be a because it's changed. So we, using the transactions, it won't happen. So this is a, a way to do that. And by the end, assuming everything goes well, we do. transaction dot commit async and this this case will not pass in the cancellation token just because we want to messages already published the broker try to delete them so if we got this far we'd like for it to not be cancelled so just let me just put a, put a try catch in here for reasons because it may fail and let's put a catch We just want to do, in fact, let's put this is what uh, IDB, IDB transaction. What don't you like? Different kind of transaction? Okay. Ah, IDB context transaction. Okay, 
Hmm. Didn't I put? Didn't I activate? Why? Enable. Okay, so we don't have a publisher, an actual publisher yet. We just have a logger to publish things. And over here, we have this. So this is ready, as ready as possible. So let's add this. Let me go to the the I configuration. Okay, scan from assembly, stuff, stuff, stuff. Can I do this here? What do I have here? At, at classes. No, not really. I don't want to use this. This is simpler. I'm just. Return services. Okay, so let's register services. Now register. We just try one thing at classes. Add singleton and I'll add the outbox mess manager as a singleton. And I'll add the I outbox message listener. As the outbox messenger, and I'll do something different. The outbox messenger will implement manager will implement let's keep it like this because I don't have a good name to use it. But what I'm trying to do is I'm putting the Outbox Manager as is so we can also inject it directly into a place that we'll see in a bit. But I also want to use the same Outbox messenger Manager as the listener. So we need it to be a singleton so the channel can take care of everything. So Now this is ready. What we need now we need also the services dot add scoped outbox publisher. And what we need here. We'll also create an, another class here. I'm not really organizing things that well. I'll eventually think about that. Right now, let's just make things work. So now we need to implement an ASP.NET Core or .NET Core uh, background service to be listening on the channel and publishing the things. 
So we'll create a class that's named Outbox Background Service. Lot of imagination. And this will inherit from background service. A constructor that will need a high service scope factory. Or better, do we? No, we don't. No, we don't. I think we can do some things in a different way, but let's get it working and then organize things. So, box messenger, manager. And all we need to do here is outbox manager dot consume async and stopping token. So this background service service just exists to be to call this and when this finish it's over. So outbox, outbox background service, we need to register this. So let's go back to here and do services.add background add hosted. Yeah. Add hosted service. So this will register a hosted service that will run as soon as we start the application. Okay, so we should be able to start the whole application. Let's see. And let me open the console. Login. I don't remember if there is a user. There is, but we would like it to not be. Let me just to let's create a new user. Test forty four. Okay, so let's see if we find in the auth stuff our event. We have a lot of logs, so user registered.
Nope. Is there something wrong over here? Maybe. Let's put... Uh, let me just stop the health. Start it again in debug, so because maybe I did something wrong. Put the breakpoint in here. File updated. And it's not reaching reaching here. Hmm. Let's get back to the outbox manager mm, is the problem no this is here let's see okay so it's writing to message ID channel hmm I think I know what I did wrong or not I don't know okay we get here so probably I messed up before so that part is okay So we have the messages here. But it failed. What happened? Oh, a new follower. Boker two men. Hey there. What's the exception? Object disposed. What is disposed? I'm doing stupid thing somewhere. If anyone sees it, let me know. Object disposed.
I would love to know what's the exception. For starters, let me just put it here. And this is a problem I'm not throwing. Hey there, Mr. Krampus. Start this again. Try to figure out where I did crap. It is failing on find, which at first glance seems weird because it didn't seem that. What their ID? It's a uh, JetBrains Rider. Jason Serialization. Ah, uh, is it that? Let's just try one thing. Is it better? I don't know. It's because Rider is from the from JetBrains with ReSharper. It's like you have ReSharper when you some things the the um, the experience is similar to Visual Studio with ReSharper, but at times it feels faster. But I don't know if it's better. I, I don't use it enough because at work I use Visual Studio and then. At home, when playing around, I use Rider just to try both things. But I, I'm not very. I don't. Uh, sometimes I just use Visual Studio Code, and it's work works out well enough so, for me. So I'm not that demanding with the IDEs. So I use them interchangeably just to play around it, with them. Just check what I was going to do. Okay, let me go back to data grip. Uh, my idea is to use uh, different things. So right now I'm using EF, but uh, I'll probably use different so I'll probably use Dapper in another project and uh, use something else in another and a different database like MongoDB in another. But it depends on, on the things. I don't think it's really a, just a preference because if you, if you are doing just simple queries, the ORM just does it, does it for us and we don't want, need to worry. If we want to do the queries exactly the way we want, then let's go with a lighter weight one. So I don't think it's just, of course there's preference, but I think there's more than preference. It's like a use case. Sometimes one is better than the other. Even the Stack Overflow guys that wrote Dapper say they normally use EF for the inserts to avoid um, worrying about uh, foreign keys and stuff like that. But then for the queries, they use Dapper. So it's really a use case. Even the guys that wrote it think that. But some people just don't like your ORM, so I don't mind. As long as people using the ORM know that there are trade-offs and sometimes you need to know what's going on. We can we can just assume everything is going to be perfect. Uh, so I wanted to get rid of these events because probably no why is it not being able to deserialize this this is weird 
let's go back in debug I shouldn't have stopped everything Why is it not being able to deserialize that? Let me just check one thing. Yeah, it's using the same settings to deserialize stuff. Yes, it's true that the type is an abstract class. But with that information, with the information that there is in the, the database, I'm storing this type so it knows how to deserialize so it should be able to why is it not you see I did something like this before so it should work similarly Why is it not working? Order event base. It was already an abstract class. I don't know why is it doing this. So it's an abstract class, it's based out stuff. Let me just check one thing to be sure. User registered, user updated, user updated. So this metadata seems okay. But it is not liking this. And I have no idea right now. If anyone has any idea, let me know. 
because this should work this year lies to base but the settings would say the way to handle the names so it can deserialize things if I didn't have this working before in another sample it might make, change, make sense but it worked before that's why I feel it really weird one thing then am I even using getters and setters and stuff what kind of configurations do we have here Got no idea. Need to do some more investigation because this is really weird. It worked to serialize, but it's not being able to deserialize. And I did over here exactly the same thing. Settings, serialize, deserialize. I even copied the code from here to the other place. No idea. Just do a quick test, just stop this off and on the program before starting stuff, let's say we have a let me copy that part.
Surname White. Jason Convert. Deserialize. Is North event okay? Let's see what's in here because I have no idea why it's failing, considering I tested this already. So, serialized, we have all these things. This here lies. It was able to this here lies. So what's going on in there? This is really weird. Really weird. Let's undo all of this. Let me go here and put a breakpoint somewhere here. I stopped everything again. I'd love to debug that part. I'm pretty sure I'm able to put a breakpoint in here. But I have no idea how to do it now. So I'll just simplify. Result event Right.
I don't know what I'll find out from this, but just testing. Four, 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 save. I'm not getting it at all. We did the same thing at the beginning at the program and it worked and now it's not working. I think this is the kind of thing to try again later with a fresh head. And the stream is already over one hour so maybe a good idea to just give it a rest. But I don't understand, because at first glance the, the code seems the same as what I have here in a simpler example. And I did exactly this, used Newton soft JSON to handle the hierarchies without worrying too much, because npg SQL handled it, but not the hierarchies. So I used Newton soft just to not worry about that. But for some reason, this is not liking it. And I'm not understanding why. It is able to serialize, but not to deserialize. So I'll give it a rest, think about it a bit, and get back here the next time. Hopefully, when we in the next stream, I already figured this out. So I won't leave this hanging for that long but right now I have no idea so I'm, I'm not going to continue hammering on it but besides this I wanted to see the rest of the code working so I have no idea why this is doing it like this okay I'll wrap it up and continue try to figure this out in the meantime and back here for the next stream hopefully next friday let's see how it goes but the idea is to be on the next friday hope you anyone that joined enjoyed it even though the end was a bit disappointing i was really expecting to see this happening but let's see Hopefully, we'll get back to this with success later. All right. Every, everyone's cool. So, see you next time. See you.